The Lord is speaking clearly as we get into the heat of the presidential election in America. And he is sharing with me how we can be praying for our political leaders in order to bring transformation in Washington. I know that you have been discerning. It's time for change. Let me share with you what the Spirit of God has said to me about how he wants us to pray for statesmen to arise in America. It's a faith fire America watch. All right, so here I am, Frank Mickens again here with you with Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries. Our mission is revival in the church, America, uh, rather revival in the church, awakening in the world. And it is my privilege and, and, pr and prayer to be with you right now because this word from the Lord is quite urgent. It is quite pointed and sharp. And I know the Lord wants me to release it to you so you can help us pray into the heart of God. I'm going to share with you a word from the Lord. Uh, that I got from a dream, and I sought the Lord over some days to get some insight on this. Uh, and in this dream, I was the president of the United States, and what I found to be interesting is I was President Barack Obama, and I was addressing the nation. I was in a very similar environment uh, like what we see with the State of the Union Address. There were political leaders, former presidents, uh, Supreme Court justices, members of Congress in this uh, space where I was speaking. And before I was speaking, I just discerned I was President Barack Obama. And there was a very unique thing that I said as the first words that came out of my mouth. And those words were, were I could say, I told you so, but I won't because you could say, I told you so too. I'm going to say this again. I could stay in, I, I said in this dream, I can stand up here and say, I told you so, but I won't because you could have told me so too. And it was just impactful in the dream because I knew this was the heart of God that all men would honor one another. We're gonna get into the scripture in just a minute. But I was speaking in particular to former president George H.W. Bush at the time. And I began weeping in the dream when I said this. I said, we need to pray for politics in this country. And then I said it again. We need to pray for politics in this country. And I was weeping as I then hugged former President George H.W. Bush, who we know is, is dead. He's passed away. But this was a spiritual dream. The Lord was giving me parabolic insight into his heart. This dream carries the heart of God that no matter what the political party is, that men would love one another and honor one another, admit their mistakes, but also admit that they also are part of a larger group of people who are mistake prone, that we all make mistakes. And I knew and discerned very, very strong. The spirit of the Lord is hurt and grieved by the pointing of fingers in Washington. The spirit of the Lord tells us in scripture that when we look at the speck in our brother's eye and we ignore the beam in our own eye, that we're out of order. And that we should first deal with what's in our own sight, what's in our own vision, what it is uh, that is in our vision that is impacting how we see others. And that's the heart of God. So I said, we need to pray for politics in this country. We need to pray for politics in this country. This is the heart of the Lord. And I'm weeping in this dream. And I gave President George H.W. Bush a, a fist bump, just like Barack Obama would do. And I said something to another president uh, who I do not remember who they were, but they were in the room. And that's when I said, it's time for the statesmen to arise in this country. And I said it again, it's time for the statesmen to arise in this country. This is specific to America. And as I said this, I began to see the audience filled with children and the children had their hands raised in worship to Jesus Christ. And I knew that I was prophesying over the nation as well as praying for the nation, praying that statesmen would arise. What kind of statesmen? Statesmen that will take care of the next generation and the generation after that. Statesmen who will appreciate worship and faith as they do the work of a statesman. Merriam-Webster defines a statesman as someone who has honor, respect, they have skill, they are actively engaged in the business of government. This is a person of principles. But add to that faith and worship. That is the heart of the Lord. 
A statesman does not have their own interest in mind. A statesman seeks to honor the Lord no matter what. Imagine if President Barack Obama was to say these kinds of words in the environment we're in right now. Politicians don't like to admit to one another when they're wrong. They don't like what they fear would be political fallout or losing strength or losing the image of strength. But humility is what the Lord is calling for. And so as I woke up from this dream, I began to so uh, seek the Lord in Scripture. What is it, Lord, in Scripture that you're speaking into with this illustration in this dream? And he sent me to 1 Peter chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 15 through 17. Please listen to this. It says, for this is the will of God. Think about it. This is the will of God. Even the way this scripture begins notates that this dream is the will of God. Humility and brokenness. The Lord is reminding me right now that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. We cannot fully serve God. We cannot adequately be living sacrifices, which is our reasonable service, if we're not broken, if we're not willing to be transparent, if we're not willing to be contrite, meaning repentant, meaning humble, meaning uh, serving others and not seeking others to serve us. Jesus said in his own words that he came not to be served but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. What if we had statesmen in Congress, statesmen in the staff and the Oval Office? What if we had statesmen on the Supreme Court who were so sold out for Jesus Christ? It wasn't, uh, it didn't matter to them how many votes they got, but they want to please the Lord. Listen to this in 1 Peter 2, 15 and 16 and 17. It says, for this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. This is where we take political science and put it on the shelf. And we say, Lord, what good do you want me to do? I'm not here to manipulate people in order for them to vote for me. I'm not here to say one thing in private and do another thing in public. I'm here to just do good. And by doing good, I'll put to silence those who are in the wrong. It goes on to say, doing so as free or a person in freedom, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants of God. This is how God wants us to pray for our leaders in America, that they won't use the liberties that we've grown so accustomed to as cloaks for their vices, for the things that we always see exposed in the political realm, corruption of all kinds, sexual immorality, lies, double-mindedness, switching gears from one month to the next, not having a stability standing on what you believe and knowing why you believe it, but instead being bond servants of the Lord. We need to pray for the people who are in halls of Congress, in the Supreme Court, the president of the United States, even these candidates that are going to be vying for president. We need to pray that they will become bond servants of the Lord. This is the heart of God. And then it says, honor all people, Love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Listen to this. God wants our leaders to be people of honor, people of love, people who fear God and those who honor leadership. This is the revival God desires in America. Many of the people that we're praying for are Christians. Many of the people we're praying for have been baptized. Many of the people we're going to be praying for say that they believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh gave his life, rose on the third day, and is sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us, but they're not living as those full of honor, full of love, overflowing with the fear of God and honoring leadership. We need to pray for good men and good women to fill the halls of Congress, to fill the Supreme Court, to fill the Oval Office, and their staff members as well. Those who are out doing the work, they need to be bond servants of God. We need them to fill our halls of justice and our halls of legislation. And the Spirit of the Lord impressed upon me to write this down. There is another spirit operating in our government, and it is not the Spirit of the Lord. And we need to pray for the righteous to seek office and to walk in their righteousness. We don't just need people to say one thing, to get elected, then get into office, and now it's all about the money. It's all about staying there. It's all about pleasing the lobbyists. It's all about pleasing your base quote unquote. No, it's about pleasing the Lord. We need to pray for radical believers who will say what they believe, stand on it and not budge because they think they're going to lose votes or they think they're going to be too radical for people. 
Listen, the time is coming where God is seeking revival fire in Congress, revival fire in the White House, revival fire in the U.S. Supreme Court, and the trickle-down effect throughout the nation, in our government, in the state house, in our governments, in our cities, in our governments, in our school boards, and all over, our county commissions, glory to God, our county supervisors. God is seeking revival in the political realm. Remember what I said in the dream. I prophesied over the nation. We need to be praying for our politics in our nation. The whole thing. I wrote this down. We don't need to just honor our leaders. We need to pray for honorable leaders. We don't need to just honor our leaders, meaning give them lip service. We need to pray for honorable leaders. We need them to also have a heart after the Lord. Pray for their hearts to bow to the Lord. Intercede for our leaders to come to God and to serve the Lord. Prophesy to the seat of power that it will become a mercy seat that the Lord can sit on and reign and rule. Remember, Samuel taught Israel the behavior of a king after he anointed Saul as the king. He taught the people. He didn't just teach Saul glory to the Lord. This is in 1 Samuel chapter 11. Samuel taught the people the behavior of a king. He had already anointed Saul, and then he called Saul to Gilgal, and he told the people in their presence, this is the man the Lord has chosen. He, pu he, he pulled out the tribe of Benjamin. He, he pulled out the son of Kish, Saul, and he said, look at the man, look at the stature of the man God has chosen to lead his people. Listen to the Lord. And then Samuel told Saul, let us go and renew the kingdom. Oh, God, there's a renewal of the kingdom of God. When we have leaders who are in right step with Jesus, they will go with the man of God and go worship the Lord and make sacrifices. We need to be praying, oh, my God, that the people who are leading our nation will have a heart to worship the Lord and they will be as the young, humble Saul, not the one who got so enamored with the spoils and the spoils of the people's opinions about him. And he wanted to be revered. Oh God, he didn't seek the reverence of the Lord anymore. He sought his own reverence and that is an issue. And so that is what we need to pray against because that spirit of pride is a major issue in the halls of Congress in the White House and in the U.S. Supreme Court. We need to pray for those men and women to be humble before the Lord, that he may lift them up, that they won't seek their own elevation, but they will seek to elevate the Lord, that they'll know the word of God where it says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We're trying to make revival through laws and, and principles when the laws and principles of God have already been established. We don't need to try to convince people to keep their babies instead of aborting them. We need leaders who are seeking the Lord, interceding on the behalf of their people, having prayer meetings, somebody praise the Lord, having fasting times together and seeking the Lord. This begins with the leaven of the kingdom of God. If we can just get the seed to start uh, penetrating and getting into the soil of our government, we'll see a yeast grow and spread among the nation. And I'm telling you, this is the heart of the Lord. This is how he wants us to pray that the spirit of the Lord will have full reign and rule in Washington. Help me pray for Christians to pray for our leaders, to pray for our government instead of criticizing our governors. I wrote that down. You need to help me pray for Christians to stop criticizing those who govern and instead pray for their government. Glory to God. I thank you for this time uh, that you spent with me. I, don't want, I didn't want to keep you long, but I do want to pray with you as we pray for our nation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we look at this word where it says that we should honor all men, glory to God, and we should love the brotherhood, and we should fear God and honor the king. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe you've given us grace to pray into this, your heart that's being revealed by the dream from the Lord. God, we pray that the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, which is the beginning of knowledge, will infiltrate the hearts of people in places of power, 
and influence. God, we pray that they will be statesmen, that they will represent the state and not themselves. God, I pray that they will know what the scriptures say, that they are leaders held to a higher standard, that the elders are those who should be of a certain character status. Oh God, and they are counted as elders in our government. We pray that they will not be those who seek filthy lucre, God, that they'll be the spouse of one wife, glory to God, that they won't be adulterous, God, that they'll know how to rule their own house in the name of Jesus, that their children will be those who have been brought up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. This is not above your power. I hear you say, call upon your strong right arm. God, your arm is not too short to save. Glory to the name of Jesus. We pray for the mighty name of Jesus to be proclaimed in Congress, God, in the Supreme Court. We pray that it, even if it begins as a whisper, God, and it begins as quiet times of prayer and intercession and supplication before your throne that it becomes a wildfire in Congress. Jesus, your words were that you came to send fire on the earth and how much you desired that the fire was already kindled. Father, as you wept over Jerusalem, you desired that they would not have missed their visitation, that you were there for them, that your peace is what you wanted to give them. God, we want the peace of Jesus on our nation. You said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Father, we pray that the nation will know that the God of America is Jesus Christ and will build this house on the solid rock of your name and we will not build it on sand again. For the good of our children and children's children, God, we pray that the worship that begins with the fear of God will be made known among our children and generations to come will know that their government can indeed serve the Lord. Oh God, what an attack we're enduring in the halls of Congress. What an attack we're enduring in the White House. Why? Because the enemy knows his time is short. Father, we come together to pray. I impart in the name of the Lord a razor sharp focus and targeting in the spirit realm for those who come and listen to this word. Oh, I pray you give them a oh, laser sight in the spirit to pray and to go into the to the throne room of God and make intercession for this nation and see mountains move. You said, if we believe, oh, and had the faith of a mustard seed, we can speak to a mountain, a thing that has been set up as an idol worshiping location and that thing will topple. God, the amount of corruption that's been set up in Washington, we come against it now in the name of the Lord. I pray for the spirit of Josiah. Oh, the same spirit of revelation that came upon him and he began began to repent and weep when the word of the Lord was read in his presence and he began to see how far the people had come away from the Lord and he tore down all oh, the Asherah poles. He tore down the places where Baal was worshiped. He tore down the places, God, where Molech was worshiped and children were given to the demonic. We pray that the same spirit that moved on Josiah, the same uh, reputable spirit of God, the holy God, the spirit of our Savior Jesus will come upon your people. I pray that we will not give up in prayer, that we will not stop until we see the manifestation of your glory. Revival's coming in the name of the Lord, and it's coming everywhere. It's going to spread like wildfire. Lord, just like you've prophesied in the earth with the wildfires we're seeing all over America that people aren't even paying attention to, you're doing it now in the spirit and we're not seeing the breakthrough yet, but you're already making provision. You've already set the table. You've already made things dry in the earth. Oh, Jesus. And we seek you in this dry and thirsty land in the name of the Lord. Who's praying with me right now? I pray you take up your mantle of prayer and you won't think you're just here to watch a video or listen to a podcast, but you'll take up your warfare, which is not carnal and mighty through God and tear down strongholds. God, we pray into 1 Peter 2 15 that the will of God is that by doing good, our political leaders, Father, in the name of the Lord, will make foolish people stop talking. That they won't use their liberty as a cloak for vice, but they'll be bond servants of God, that they'll be slaves to the Lord Jesus. They used to be slaves to sin. And we pray now that you cleanse them from every defiling thing. I pray against the lust spirit that's trying to take these men 
by surprise, oh God, and strangle them and suck out of them, Lord God, the vigor of the spirit and cause them to serve their lustful desires. I pray in the name of the Lord that you keep scandals from breaking forth. I pray for the watchmen to arise for the first, second, third, and fourth watch in the night and begin to come against the devil. God, I pray we come to you to get strategies, insight, and understanding so that we can pray. Bless us indeed, enlarge our territory in this marketplace called the political realm. And I pray that you'll put your hand upon us and that we will not know pain. Let no weapon formed against us be able to prosper in the name of the Lord. And I pray that we'll operate as you promised us in Luke 19, that we can tread over serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. And no thing shall by any means harm us, but we've got to take the steps to tread on the serpent. We've got to do the work, God. I pray for laborers in the spirit. Hallelujah. To pray and fast. Oh, I pray for people to become midwives in the spirit realm and birth into the earth your perfect will. This is my prayer, God, in Jesus' name. And even as I'm praying, I pray that this listener or this viewer is beginning to feel the anointing of God falling on them. You've been planted in this earth, in this nation for a reason. I pray you'll be, oh God, like Ruth and sitting at the feet of Boaz in the midnight hour, desiring provision straight from the Lord, that the bread of life will be your sustenance, oh, that the bread of the, of the word of God will be your nourishment, that you'll seek the words of his mouth more than your necessary food. I prophesy this into your spirit by the hearing of the word of God. May faith arise because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. You are a knight in the spirit. You are a valiant one in the spirit realm. Take up your weapons of warfare, the sword of the spirit. I pray the full armor of God. Do not allow the belt of truth uh, to come undone in your life. Uh, keep yourselves in the love of God and in the truth of his word. I bless you for this, God. Oh, I'm seeing people beginning to weep over the nation and weep over their need to pray and weep because they know you have not been praying. But God says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. He knows you and he knows what you can carry. He's saying it's time to carry your load. It's time for you to carry that which I've given you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light, says the Lord. Do not fear. Pray into what I've put in your spirit. Oh, God, I pray for watchmen to arise. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I want to invite you right now. If you can't consider yourself a prayer warrior, I invite you to email me at mail at faithfireworldwide.com. We are building a watchman network where I'm sharing. I shared this dream with our watchmen and I'm asking them to pray. I need people to pray with me for this nation. I need people to pray with me for the nations. I need people to pray with me into the will of God that he's been revealing to this vessel. And I need you to consider, are you called to pray with Faith Fire? If so, email me at mail at faithfireworldwide.com. We'll get you onto the telegram. I'm going to release this word onto the Faith Fire uh, telegram as well. But we have a special group called the Faith Fire Prophetic Fellowship that we're building in order to pray into the will of God and to manifest his glory. I've been prophesying for months now, maybe even a year, that God has been showing me all night prayer meetings. People are going to begin to pray like we've never seen people pray before in this nation, all over the nation. It's going to happen all over the nations. People are going to be praying and fasting and seeking God and, and pushing their plate away because we know that it's not going to happen unless we fill our lamps with oil and we begin to pray. Glory to God. Thank you for being here. I believe my time is up. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the dream. God, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you as bond servants of God. Come on. Oh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We are not forgotten. We are not forsaken. God's never forsaken us. We have prayer power. He says, according to the power that works within you, he does exceeding abundantly above all we can ask and think. He put in us the power to do his will, and he needs us to get involved. He needs us to get engaged. Do the work of a statesman in prayer. Somebody bless the Lord. Listen, find us at faithfireworldwide.com. 
faithfireworldwide.com. You can sign up for our newsletter. You can get the word of the Lord there as well. We even have um, some swag I don't talk much about that just says just Jesus on it. We're seeking the purity of Jesus' heart in this ministry and all over the world. Listen, we would love to hear from you if you have any questions or thoughts. And we, uh, we've we been engaging in prophetic training uh, for the last six weeks and we're going to be putting some of those trainings uh, out there and made available to you for 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 a donation and uh, we just pray that you will continue to pray for this ministry because God is speaking and we want to honor the Lord and honor his word his word is right all his works are done in truth his word is so necessary in this world and there's a famine of the hearing of the word of God it's not a famine of the word it's a famine of the hearing of the word so many are praying and prophesying and speaking and preaching and so many are turning a deaf ear but God's going to get his glory somebody say amen God's going to get his glory we pray that we see you here again very soon share this like this do whatever you need to do to get it to the people that you know need to know how to pray for this nation don't pay so much attention to news headlines that you lose hope Look at the headlines and begin to pray. We know 1 Peter 2, 15 through 17 is one place we can start to pray. We know where it says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, is a place that we can begin to pray in Psalm 62. We need to see the manifestation of his glory and his word, and we will be the ones to pray it into existence. Amen, somebody. Until we see you again, I pray that the Lord blesses you and keeps you, makes his face shine upon you, that he lift his, lifts his countenance upon you and gives you peace. In Jesus' name, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.